Welcome back to Dino Cell number two. I'm Gail Banks, and this is Killing the Duramax, part two. As we prepare to push this L5P to its breaking point and potentially paint the walls with parts, we're going to take you through each system responsible for making air density. As we increase the manifold air density, we'll reach the limit of one component after another. At each level, we'll stop, upgrade the component, and continue until we actually physically break the engine. You'll see us make the changes, and you'll know why we did it. We're going to walk you through the airflow and show you how we've outfitted each system with pressure, temperature or speed sensors, and the data produced from these sensors will be calculated and displayed on our iDash. You'll know how much air density each component was contributing when it reached its limit because the iDash will show it. The iDash ties air density to horsepower, not boost air pressure, not just temperature, not just humidity. Those won't get you there. You need to know the air density. For example, on a standard day, the air density is 72.4 pounds per thousand cubic feet. That's about the air density in this room right now, by the way. That 72.4 pounds is enough air mass to make 600 horsepower in this diesel. But this Duramax's cylinders only displace 350 CFM at 3,000 RPM. To make 600 horsepower, we need to induct 1,000 cubic feet of air. How do we get 1,000 cubic feet of ambient air into this engine? We force it in. Ambient air pressure plus boost pressure is the force. Density is what is being forced. We've been running this engine and we're a little over 550 horsepower. And this may surprise you, but right now, one third of the manifold air density per cubic foot pumped by the cylinders is contributed by the ambient air density in this room. Another third is added by the turbo, and the final third is contributed by the intercooler. You heard me right, the intercooler. We're going to show you the ambient air contribution today. Let's have a look at the cold air intake system. It all starts with my big ass filter. This is the actual filter that would be in a Banks Ram Air system for an L5P. And I've told the guys, I want a big ass filter program here at Banks. Make them as big as they can possibly be, give them the lowest pressure drop, the maximum dirt capacity, all of it. I want to own that in this industry. So we go through the big ass filter, a five inch MAF sensor into a five inch tube, we gradually reduce into the OEM inlet. We're measuring the temperature and the pressure entering the compressor. This pressure measurement goes through this nylon line. The sensor senses the pressure. The bank's net module translates it, puts it on the network, and sends it to the bank of iDashes in the control room. Let's go in there and have a look. So before we light this thing off, let's look at some of the readings on the iDash that pertain to the ambient conditions and, and where we are relative to a standard day. Okay, the first reading I want to point out is the ambient air density in the control room. It's 71.6 pounds per thousand cubic feet. That gives us 99% of a standard day this percentage reading, that is the most important thing that you can monitor on an engine that pertains to its power potential. Once that is compressed and cooled by the turbocharger and the intercooler, we're going to have a, a lot higher air density number in the engine than we have ambient. Here's the horsepower predicted for diesel if we're pushing that 71.6 pounds 
into, into the cylinders, 598 horsepower. What constitutes the ambient air density? As I said before, it's ambient air pressure, and currently the ambient air pressure in the room is 14.4 pounds per square inch absolute. That's 14.4 pounds over an absolute vacuum. So I don't talk vacuum. I talk pressure. When the piston drops down the bore, it's moving so fast, it's forming a partial vacuum, almost a perfect vacuum, above the piston. Any pressure above that perfect vacuum is forcing air into the cylinder. That's how a naturally aspirated engine breathes. So there's the force if you had a naturally aspirated engine. Th that's the force, the pressure, we want at the mouth of the compressor on your supercharger or turbocharger. We also show it in inches of mercury. A lot of people talk barometer. Right now, we're at 29.3 inches of mercury. This is not corrected barometer. This is air pressure. Corrected barometer is what the weatherman uses. We're not using that. Forget barometric pressure. We're talking about measured air pressure at your location. Ambient air temperature. You want this cold, but nature hands you whatever she's going to hand you. And the relative humidity, 40.9%, that's probably reducing the density in the room somewhat if it were zero, which most standard de definitions use, then uh, we'd have about 2% more power potential from the ambient air. You know, we're talking about all this standard day stuff and density and all of that. It occurs to me I ought to do a piece for you tech guys out there that goes right to the vein. So I'm going to do that, and we're going to put that up. This second instrument, and you'll notice all the instruments have a different layout on them. That's just done to show you we've got a wide range of colors and layouts that you can select. Uh, on the second instrument, we have a thing a reading called density altitude. Right now it's reading 1,840 feet density altitude. A lot of racers use this. Virtually all pilots use this. This tells you that our standard day-to-day -day equals an altitude of 1,840 feet. There's another reading on here, and in this is the water content of the air. Relative humidity doesn't tell you the water content of the air. This does. 53.1 grains of water per pound of dry air. Weather stations at racetracks all over the wor world display these two numbers. Well, so does the I-dash. CFM engine, we've preloaded the size of the engine. It'll look at RPM and it'll calculate the CFM being pumped by the pistons. That's CFM engine, we call that, so CFN dash EN. Down at the bottom here, the standard day we're using is called J1349. That's an SAE standard. I'll talk about it in this other video I'm going to do for you guys. Third gauge has, once again, the ambient air pressure, ambient air temperature. It's also got the intake air system pressure drop, delta P, and it's got the compressor inlet pressure. Now, right now, they're both equal. Engine's not running. But we're going to see the pressure drop. We're also going to see the temperature gain. It's going to be minimal. We're not under the hood somewhere, and there m might be zero temperature gain. But in a vehicle, you want cold air to maintain what you're going to see here. If you're inducting air under the hood with a filter on a stick, uh, and a fence around it, or no, no shielding whatsoever, you're cutting your own throat. If you're a performance guy and you see that from this day forward, that's the stuff of ignorance. You're not ignorant anymore. Every time you see it, you can either walk away or point it out to the guy. You might get smacked, I don't know, 
Last one, ambient air density it, and compressor inlet density. As this thing runs, it, you, you're going to see the density loss in the system. So we're going to fire it up. We're going to take it to 3,000 RPM, which is, which is where we're pumping about 350 CFM. You should see that number appear. We're going to take it, throttle it up to about 550 horsepower and kind of look at how the intake system is doing. So let's bark this thing. Crank up the fans. Fuel pumps on. There's something really interesting going on here. We're warming up this L5P and we have a, a device right here on the end of that is called the key box. And basically, that thing will look at the cylinder pressure in cylinder. This engine design is nominally 180 bar maximum cylinder pressure. I want to push that. And I want to know not only what the maximum cylinder pressure is, I want to know the shape of the curve leading up to the peak, where, where the peak's occurring, and how it bleeds off, or that's the, this is compression, cylinder firing, which is injection, uh, and, and I, I would say injection is taking place right about there. Would you agree, Aaron? Yeah. So what you have is kind of this nose over in cylinder pressure, you've injected the fuel, wham, here it comes. So this, in this particular instance, this is very low load. Uh, this injection delay may tend to go away under different circumstances. But the old diesels really had significant injection delay. So you inject, the fuel gets heated by the compressed air in the cylinder, and finally it fires. So you see the point of injection, and then you see the point of total combustion occurring. We come up to peak, and then it expands. The piston starts going down right here at zero. So we're injecting before top dead center. This is 20 degrees after top dead center, 40, 60, 80. Right now we're injecting, I'm going to say, seven or eight degrees before top dead center. Here's top dead center. And here's the peak cylinder pressure we're making right now, which is read off this scale right here. So we're at about 63 bar. That's 63 atmospheres. Uh, our engine speed is about 1120. So this instrument, the key box, and what we read and record is as important as the dynamometer itself. This is how I'll attempt to not kill this engine prematurely. I want to kill it physically. Cylinder pressure is the physical thing that will kill it. Uh, but I want to do all I can with higher RPM, which is more CFM engine, and other things before we actually put the crank on the floor. So there you go. So shall we we'll crank her up? Now something interesting, to get this thing to make 550, you'd think the variable geometry would be wide open. We'd actually got to pull it closed a little bit to speed up the turbo to its limit. Uh, and we're doing that, that with a special calibration we did to get you the 550. We're at the limit of this turbocharger right now at, at 550. So here we go. Here comes the power. 400. High on RPM. Here we're coming up on 500 horsepower. This is raw reading. We're not correcting this horsepower. There, 
We saw the lay at 550. We're around 1,000 pound feet at the, this isn't, this isn't the torque peak, guys. So let's look at the intake system. We have a two tenths of a percent uh, loss in the density from the room to the compressor due to pressure. Uh, we have one degree, uh, virtually zero on temperature. So what is it doing to density? We're going from 99.8. We're losing almost a full percent density through that intake system, mostly due to pressure loss. It'll be a lot more in your truck because of temperature gain. So we're at 98.8% density going into the compressor inlet. Whoa, Nelly, we're at 190 bar or better. We're over the design pressure. This turbocharger and where we're at with cylinder pressure, we got problems going on. Turbochargers out to lunch. We're way up on turbine drive pressure and we're at the limit, 135,000 RPM or so of its design speed. So let's bring this thing back down before we kill it. And I know, I know. I disappointed everybody, we didn't kill it. But you're seeing how we're sneaking up on it. Next time, it's gonna be all about why this turbocharger is out to lunch and how we could have killed it by pushing it further. This is the kind of stuff, guys, tuning without dynamometers and without instrumentation do. And then they put it up on the internet and they brag about their jackassery. Well, this jackass knows better. Next time it's the turbo, be here for that. We're all gonna learn something. So all you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube feed, Manx Power, and you can follow along with all of my jackassery. Ha, ha, ha.